Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, Animesh babies, um, Bunsies babies, and also a little bit about kitty cats and why they seem to always or occasionally fall through the floor. Here's my son Clover. I'm going to move him over a little bit and I'll keep an eye on him when I do this. Now I've moved him over and he will, he will see him because he has box there, boundary box. He's all, he dropped a little bit. Now where is he now? He is flush down on the floor. And one of the reasons that um, these babies fall through the floor is because we have multiple things that uh, interfere with the floor. Now here, my solution to this has been to raise my terrain, my ground, up just under the, the surface of the floor of the house, which is a mesh floor. Now in this example we have also have a, a carpet trim over the top. What I did is raise the land just under the very surface of the floor itself. Now, when you have objects like this pram, this carpet pram over the top of my floor, even if you've got it roar above the floor itself, it could very well be a little bit down into the floor so that it goes into that floor and causes instability because you have multiple objects, physical objects, shapes that are overlapping or, or going into each other and the baby and the kitty cat the scripting doesn't know how to process that so it ignores it and thinks it's not there and so the baby will fall straight through the floor to the uh, ground and sometimes you've got something like this, not this exactly, but you'll have something that you put on the floor that creates a different shape than the one you see. You'll see the, all, all these shapes are not always showing you the full range or the full radius that a mesh object will uh, produce. It could be tripping over something invisible and don't know where that's from. Now I want to show you that. That's my actual house floor. And if anything is touching or going into, see the baby? He dropped down under the floor and he popped back up. Now if my land wasn't up farther under the house, all the way where it was, he, my clover, our son, would have dropped under the house mostly and wandered around under the house and then out the side of the wall. Now these babies will never uh, be exactly flush because they can't. Now see I've raised my land right up under the just before the surface of the house floor. And so, when my baby uh, adjusts, he, he pops down. Now, I'm going to edit the, the floor, and I want to show you this. Here's a mesh floor. And you think it's the size. You think it's not very thick. doesn't look very thick. But look here. You can't see that thickness. But look over here. The size. The Z size is the depth and it's one meter deep. So that's a lot deeper than you're seeing on this screen. So anything you put up under it that maybe help 
stop the baby from falling under the house. If that's going into that mesh area, that one meter, it destabilizes the floor and the baby will drop straight to the ground under the house. Or the first trim that it finds or that or trim but surface that it finds is not in, being interfered with by another object. I'm gonna put this carpet back and I'll show you a different example so you understand a little bit clearer what I'm talking about. You think you're doing it right, but you're not. But you are doing it right, but you're not doing it. But it's not working out for your baby. Now look at this table. Now we, here we have the table with the shadow perm. And what do we do? We put the shadow perm on, all, all right to the surface. But look at that shadow perm, what's on it. On the face of the shadow perm, the top face is the shadow texture, but look how deep that box is. So when you put it down, that shadow texture to be on top of this carpet, all of the rest of this is going down into the carpet, destabilizing that prim or that surface or that object for the baby because the baby doesn't know how to process it. Now you can't always see the full physical shape of something. Here's another thing with the shadow perm. Look how deep this box is. The shadow is on the surface of the, of the carpet but the box around it, the actual physical box most of it is below, all the way to the ground. And it's destabilized not only that carpet that I have above the house floor, it's destabilized the house floor because it's deeper into the floor. So of course the baby drops down to the ground. Excuse me. So this is a when I make it a flat ground, I make it as flat as possible all the way across and outside of the house. Because if it begins sloping the, ha the ground a little bit, I'll show you here. I've got a mesh, some mesh ground here. But um, if my actual physical ground slopes a little, now that's also interfering with the wall a little bit. That can destabilize the wall because it's, it's, it's going into the wall. But on the ground, I don't slope it down so that I can have this nice trim on the outside being shown. I want it flat all the way out beyond because the baby will uh, often be crawling on the carpet and then we get a few meters away from a wall of the slope of the ground, he'll fall into the floor, even before uh, the slope begins, and then he's out the, out the under the house and outside the wall. It is a, a, a constant thing. You have constant battle. You have to fight, and then you've got same thing with walls. Anything that you put up on a wall. We'll say a shadow perm that has a shadow perm or has a physical shape that goes into the surface of the wall or the shape of the wall and it doesn't always show you exactly the shape as I mentioned. Well the full radius of, the, of it is just a suggestion. Yeah it's clover, it's, it's a great day. but. Here I have some shelves, and they have a they have a backing, and you put that right up against the wall. But sometimes you think it's just flush to the wall, or almost flush, but it's not. It's actually going intruding into the wall just a little bit, and that destabilizes the wall. And that's the thing that's why our babies and our kitty cats wander around under our houses, out our walls, and fall through things because of that 
destabilization. Because, like I said, the script cannot process, doesn't know how to handle an object, a platform. Let's say there's a carpet or a floor that has another physical object or another object inside of it. Doesn't know how to process what, which one is which, so it's, it just gives up and the baby goes flying under the other thing. Now, now see the about the box around the binding box, the bounding, boundary box on the uh, baby is is one reason you will never see, almost never see the baby crawling flush to the floor, his arms and legs to, down exactly on the floor. That's an, almost an impossibility to achieve because at least so far in the, the development of the of the the animesh babies and the kitty cat uh, kind of perm animation. Now, if I had, didn't have my uh, ground just under my, the surface of my floor, this certainly would have destabilized the floor and my baby would have fallen through and well, onto the ground under the house because it not only is intruding into the carpet frame I've got here, it's intruding into the physical, the, the mesh floor underneath, because it's that deep. And that's why we see this all the time. Now, prim coats, a physics-shaped prim, that coats every surface of an object, even the hole, inside of a hole, and leaves a hole, and all that, it coats the outside, and it reacts differently than a convex hull, because if you've got convex hull, it puts a plastic wrap around the object, and, but, it goes to the farthest point of an object, the, 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 the most extreme point, part of it. So if you've got something set a convex hull, it could be a bigger radius than you think. And that's really why our babies and our kitty cats at times fall through uh, our walls and fall through into uh, wall, you know, floors. And sometimes when they're crawling, they'll interact with a mesh object. And just when they're about to, to change the script function and start moving, you'll send them flying and you'll find them in your roof. Um, I haven't had that happen yet, but I've heard a few people tell me that they've had, they, they found their baby in their roof. And I'm like, oh my. So basically, that's why this happens. And uh, that's how my solution to fix it. I've tried prims and everything else, putting prim tops on everything. But it never works out because once you start placing furniture you never know what's going to interfere what's not going to interfere so if you can do it on your on the ground on your first floor at least on your first floor terraform as close to under the floor as you can the surface of the floor so it doesn't pop up into the floor itself but just under it and keep those slopes away. You know, notice here on the right, I've got a bush and that starts to slope. I left that there so you can see it. It would slope, and if you slope too soon, the baby will slide down that slope because it's a path of least resistance. In any case, that's, that's my solution to this. I'm still working on the walls and how I can pre prevent uh, the baby from going through any walls or the kitty cat from going through any walls at all. You never know when they're going to have that overlap or that intrusion of one prim into another which destabilizes. So take care and I hope to see you again soon.